did that. What are you from the 90s? No. Hey Chico, so like what's the dealio? Nothing. Oh, and so like yesterday I was all like score because I totally got a new VCR, but my dad was a total buzzkill. I'm like, he made me give it back to the store, and I was like, whatever. And he was like, talk to the hand because the face ain't listening. And I was like, are you serious? He's like, no, I'm just joshing you. I was like, yeah, I snapped, and there's all that and a bag of chips. Uh, this is 2008, just in case you didn't know. What do you remember about the 90s? I don't remember anything at all. <laughs> I remember uh, Pokemon in general and Power Rangers. I remember Tyra Banks' rise to fame. He-Man, She-Ra. Fresh Prince, Super Mario Brothers. That used to be the game back then. What was the most embarrassing thing that you loved from the 90s? Nothing. <laughs> I really liked the Looney Tunes shirts where they were dressed in gangster clothing and they were on the front and the back. Those are the more expensive ones. Barney. Barney was the most embarrassing thing. I watch Mag Magic School Bus every day. Is there anything you miss about the 90s? No, not really. I miss the Thai Beanie Babies. I had a million of them. The Jinko jeans. Those were so comfortable. Sock and boppers and moon boots. But it didn't matter because they didn't go that high anyway. Gas wasn't so high. Everything was a lot cheaper. How has the world changed in the last 18 years? I don't think it has. <laughs> okay, maybe a little, but no. And now we have all these violent games like Grand Theft Auto 4. There's a lot more technology. Oh, uh, the world has changed because all the rap songs have gotten a lot dirtier. Uh, they used to be all happy with like Fresh Prince and Jazzy Jeff, and now they're not good anymore. Hope you enjoyed that blast from the past, Warriors. This is Taylor Prater. And Taylor Prater! Signing off for the WBC. Who are you voting for? Hi, my name is Sarah Palin and I'm here to discuss with you the importance of Election Day. The Republican candidate is John McCain, the Senator of Arizona, and his running mate is Sarah Palin, the Governor of Alaska. Tonight, I have a privilege given few Americans, the privilege of accepting our party's nomination for President of the United States. The Democratic candidate is Barack Obama, Senator of Illinois. His running mate is Joe Biden, the Senator of Delaware. I'm absolutely confident that we can create the kind of America that our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren deserve. Let's go out there. Which presidential candidate do you support? I'm supporting John McCain. Um, I support Barack Obama. Why do you support them? I'm supporting John McCain because I believe that the government shouldn't be as big as what Barack Obama wants it to be. I think, you know, the people should run the country rather than the government. Uh, I support him. The reason I support him is because of a lot of things. First of all, he's going to uh, bring down taxes on the middle class. He's going to help us out. That's going to help me out personally. That's why I support them. Wait, wait, is there not a talent portion? Uh, why aren't zombie movies ever in the top ten? What are the top ten scary movies? Ten. Friday the 13th. Made 1980 and made $59.7 million in the box office. Nine. Dead Alive. Made in 1992. Only made $242,000. Eight. Psycho. Made in 1960 and made $32 million in the box office. Seven. A Nightmare on Elm Street. Made in 1984. Made twenty five point five million. Six. The Shining. Made nineteen eighty and made forty four million in box office. 
5. Night of the Living Dead. Made 1968 and made 30 million in the box office. 4. Halloween. 1978 and made 47 million. 3. Dawn of the Dead. 1978 and 55 million in the box office. 2. Alien. 1979, 203.6 million in the box office. 1. The Exorcist. 1973, and a whopping 204.6 million in the box office. Well, that's it for the top 10 scary movies. Have a good Halloween, Warriors. This is Alex signing off for the WBC. Hey, are you ready? Dracula. <laughs> Dracula? I told you to get a scary costume. Dracula, that Dracula's like a hundred years old. I thought it was pretty scary. Hey warriors, do you remember a hundred years ago? Let's go take a look. For starters, if I lived a hundred years ago, I would probably be married and have children. 90% of all U.S. physicians had no college education. More than 95% of all births in the U.S took place at home. Only 14% of homes had a bathtub. Most women only washed their hair once a month and they used egg yolks for shampoo. The average wage a person made was 22 cents an hour. Arizona, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Hawaii, and Alaska had not been admitted to the union yet. One in 10 U.S. adults could not read or write. The child labor laws did not go into effect until 1938, so many children were up from dawn until dusk. Marijuana, heroin, and morphine were available over-the-counter at corner drugstores. And the population in the U.S. has grown from 76 million to 205 million people. What was society like 100 years ago? Um, I would probably say that it was probably difficult for like different races and also, not, also having to do everything by yourself and by hand. I'm going to say it was probably a lot more simplistic, with less, you know, technology and all the crazy stuff we have these days. So they probably didn't have computers, which means no Pres Hilton, so gossip is probably really slow. What has changed in the past hundred years? Okay, pretty much just new technology and cars. Basically just a lot of new technology, like, you know, we didn't used to have all these computers and cell phones. Technology, definitely. What do you think society will be like in 2108? I would probably say that we would have robots doing everything for us. We're probably going to have like space travel and flying cars. We'll definitely have flying cars by then. This is Elizabeth Bird signing off for the WBC. Oh, oh, uh. Grandma, I... Dude, you can't be forgetting your lines. This is the 100th episode. It's supposed to be really good. It's the 100th episode of WBC. <laughs> Hi, I'm John Warder. The word on the street is that this is the 100th episode of WBC. It's a pretty big deal. I mean, how many times does a TV show get 100 episodes? So I wanted to put a video together for your enjoyment. So let's go to the past. Oh, just, just watch the video. Strikes your out at the old ball game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was it was amazing. The semester I taught, which was at Granbury High, and about three and a half years ago. Is your academy? Uh, my academy is uh, <laughs> big thanks. And you are Captain Jack Sparrow.
hope you enjoyed that like I did. Until next time, this is John Warder signing off for the WBC. What's the matter, man? Oh, did you just find out about the two-way mirror thing? It's a, you know, it's, it's a myth. No, it's Dude, real. It's a myth. It's real. What a, it's a myth, man. Don't worry about it. by the main office. I heard this was the gateway into Narnia for the third movie. If you look into it for too long, it sucks you in like the poltergeist. Miss Bridges sits on the other side and she has a camera. It's supposed to be double-sided. <laughs> then she goes home every night and she watches it over and over and over. Yeah, I heard that it's double-sided or something like that. Yeah, uh, I've heard that it's double-sided. Aslan's in here. Why do you think Miss Bridges would want a double-sided mirror? I got a better question. Why wouldn't she want a double-sided mirror? To watch over the halls. Just to pick on innocent children. So she could see everybody checking themselves out. So she can get into Narnia too? Do you believe the mirror is double-sided? Yes. I don't think it's double-sided because that's pointless. It's just a mirror. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course. Uh, personally, I don't. Yeah, I believe it's double-sided. I do believe the mirror is double-sided, because it's just too random of a mirror. Why would the school have a mirror in the middle of the hallway? Good question, Chris. Only one way to find out. So I went to Miss Bridges to find out more. But that was all I could get out of her. So I guess we'll never know. So, Warriors, next time you check yourself out in the hallway mirror, don't forget to say hi to Miss Bridges. This is your fan signing off for the WBC. What are you doing for Halloween? Halloween Nights light display. Grand Prairie's Halloween Nights is at the Quick Trip Park 1600 Lone Star Parkway next to the Nokia Theater. <laughs> the City of Grand Prairie teamed up with Flight Tasmic to put together carnival games, mazes, pumpkin patches, concessions, gift shops, and lights for a fun, no scare Halloween. <laughs> Halloween nights open October 24th and will go to the 1st of November. Admission is $10 for adults and $5 for children 12 years and younger. Halloween nights is open from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Friday through Saturday. For more information, visit www.halloweennights.org or www.airhogsbaseball.com where you will find an ad on the side. Whether you go to Six Flags, Fright Fest, Trick or Treating, Halloween Nights, or even our football game, keep safe this Halloween. This is Katie Crawford signing off for the Warrior Broadcast Center. This is J.D. Henderson and Zach Gunderson signing off for the WBC. See ya!